Ladies and gentlemen, the unthinkable happened today. Josh McDaniels, the Raiders head coach, actually tried to win a game today. This is the first time this guy has looked like he's tried to win a game since the Kansas City Chiefs game on Monday Night Football. Josh McDaniels was calling some great plays today. Long gone were the Devontae Adams receiver passes. We didn't have Devontae Adams lined up at running back. No Josh Jacobs at fullback. No weird plays where Jacobs gets a half back draw on third and long. Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller were readily available and we actually saw more passes that weren't just go routes on the sideline to Devontae Adams or Matt Collins. We actually saw something pretty interesting today which was play action. We saw a lot of play action today and actually for the Raiders with Derek Carr going into this game he does play action some of the least amount of times in the NFL. It ranked 26 in percentage of dropbacks that are play action plays and this is kind of odd given the fact that Jared Sidham today had of his first nine passes. Eight of them were play action. You saw him clicking with his wide receivers, getting Darren Waller involved. This guy is ready to go and available like he was during the Rams game, but then McDaniels left him on IR during that game. But you also had Stidham connect with Devontae Adams on crossing patterns, and it was really cool to see Josh McDaniels finally open the playbook up. It's almost like he brought out the Tom Brady playbook we've been hearing about, but instead all season we've been getting all the weird stuff, all the weird McDaniels trick plays and absolutely no play action. It makes sense that now would be the time for Josh McDaniels to actually open up the playbook because with the angry fan base about the benching of Derek Carr, one way to make the noise quiet down is to get a victory with Jared Stidham and make it look like Derek Carr was the problem the whole time. So now you finally got Josh McDaniels actually trying to win a game. And even Vic Tafer of The Athletic is saying don't remember those design rollout plays with Carr. It was clearly a different playbook, but I do want to give Stidham some credit and I don't want to take everything away from the guy. It's not his fault that Josh McDaniels is a total sleaze bag. I can believe that McDaniels sabotaged Carr this year and yes, now he's opening up the real playbook and it looked good against one of the number one defenses in the NFL, the San Francisco 49ers. It looked good given the fact that we have weapons all around our offense. This is what we should have been getting this whole time, but we've only seen this type of offense in select moments with the Raiders with Derek Carr during the Chiefs game, during the Seahawks game. You can see it looked like Josh McDaniels was actually trying to win it. But then you've seen games where it's looked like a total sabotage and David Carr is going to say something tomorrow, Monday on NFL Network about the Raiders, Josh McDaniels and Derek Carr. And I think it is going to be very damning. David Carr recently retweeted an article that talked about the odd play calling by Josh McDaniels, how he set Derek Carr up for failure. But Derek Carr will be moving on and is going to join a new team next year. So this will probably be the final word by the Carr brothers on Josh McDaniels. Stidham did get the benefit of being able to utilize some of the great plays and play action, but he did play well. He was able to use his legs to extend plays at times. Still did not get the W, and all the car haters say that's all that matters. Even if even if Derek Carr has nice stats, the W is all that matters. Well, Jared Stidham did not get the W today, and he threw two picks, but I'm actually going to defend his picks. One of those picks was batted at the line of scrimmage in the air. Not really his fault. And another pick is when the defender wrestled with Mac Hollins it was kind of a 50-50 ball. I'm not going to really put that on Jared Stidham. However, the final pick was a bad pick that ultimately ended in the L for Jared Stidham. Hit as he's thrown. It was just short pass. And yes, he's hit as he's thrown, so that's going to affect him. But nobody gave Derek Carr a break when he was hit as he's thrown when he threw a pick in the end zone against the Rams. So hey, still overall a decent game. And I think if he does have a decent game against the Chiefs, the only silver lining for me, I feel bad for Derek Carr. I think Mark Davis and Josh McDaniels are sleaze bags for how they've treated Derek Carr. I am glad that Derek Carr is still going to play and go off on a new team. However, the main thing that I want going forward is to have no Brady. I don't want any Tom Brady because I do believe that if Brady wins the Super Bowl with the Raiders, it's not going to really feel like the Raiders won a Super Bowl. It's going to feel like just Brady came here and he won a Super Bowl. And the Raiders aren't going to get any credit for it. But with Jared Stidham, a guy who hasn't really gotten too much of an opportunity and he appears to be doing well with Josh McDaniels, Josh McDaniels finally opened up the playbook and it seems like Jared Stidham could execute it. He knows the plays. He's familiar with the guy. I would want Stidham to do well and be the QB if it means keeping Brady in retirement. That's why I was kind of disappointed that he ultimately didn't get the dub against the Niners. He still had a good game statistically, and I think if he would have gotten the dub, then he kind of makes his case and puts some pressure on the front office to have him be the starting quarterback. But I think ultimately the plan all along has been for Brady. I think McDaniels has been sabotaging Carr this whole time for Brady. That's been the plan. Brady's going to be in Vegas next year, and if Stidham's going to be on the Raiders, I think it's likely 
likely as a backup, but hopefully he can impress against the Chiefs next week and maybe he can make the case to keep Brady at home. I believe if the Raiders do draft a QB, they also won't be having this QB start. I don't think that's going to happen. The Raiders are definitely in a win now mode. They clearly have a ton of weapons on the offensive side of the ball that they could have been using all year, but I guess injuries happen. But I don't think they're going to roll with the rookie QB to try to take over and win a Super Bowl in Vegas. I think they're going to bring in a veteran like Brady. I think it's already been set up. Mark Davis loves the guy. You see him hanging out with him in Vegas this year in 2022. So even if we do draft a QB right now, we're projected to be seventh overall in the draft. And if we lose again next week, I think that's going to go a little bit higher. But even if we draft a QB, I think he'll likely sit under the veteran. And I don't see us doing that, especially if Brady comes in. We're going to need some more help on the defensive side of the ball, whether it be defensive tackle, cornerback. We definitely need some help there. So, hey, so hopefully Stidham works out and he ends up, you know, sweeping the front office and they're just like, whoa, we love this guy and the fans love him. Because if that happens, then we can actually draft some defense in the first round instead of a quarterback. But when you look at some of these teams who are drafting ahead of the Raiders, I'm not 100% sure they're going to get a quarterback. The Bears are not going to get a quarterback. They already have fields. The Cardinals are not going to get a quarterback. They got Kyler Murray who's recovering from an injury. And then Seattle, if they roll with Geno Smith, maybe they don't get a QB to sit under Geno. That's an open question. Also, the Lions, do they continue to roll with Jared Goff? Perhaps they maybe get somebody to sit under him, but they could easily not choose a QB. So even as of today, it could end up being Houston and the Colts who pick a QB, and then the Raiders are third to pick a quarterback. That would be very interesting. You can get one of the top guys. Maybe they take CJ Stroud and Bryce Young off the board, and then maybe the Raiders get somebody, uh, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, who knows? And on some level, when I see us blow these historic leads, by the way, Josh McDaniels has blown another double-digit lead. Tonight was the Raiders' fifth loss this season, in which they had a double-digit second-half lead, and this is now the most in a single season by any team of all time that we've blown these leads. So I don't want Brady. I want to believe maybe McDaniels just wants his own guy, but I see a Raiders team that's ready for a Super Bowl right now with a loaded offensive roster. So I want to believe, hey, maybe McDaniels is tanking these games to go get his Joe Burrow, go get his top QB in the draft. Or maybe he already has his guy and Jared Stidham is breaking records for a reason. But I'm still a cynical Raiders fan and I think Carr was set up for failure by Josh McDaniels. He had to have the fan base lose faith in him after having a magical season last year, making the playoffs, being the 64th highest rated player in the NFL top 100. And I think with a losing season, it appears more justified to move on from Derek Carr. And I think the only reason why you do this is because you know you have a backup plan. And I think that backup plan is Tom Brady. So, hey, I hope the Raiders roll with Stidham. Hope they draft their own QB. But unfortunately, I think the reality is Tom Brady to Vegas. Make sure you check out this video where we did connect the dots on Tom Brady to Vegas. Is it a possibility? Was it a sabotage job from the get go? Either way, like this video if you had not yet. Subscribe to this channel for more Raiders content. My name is Wi-Fi Willie. Peace out and I hope you have a good one.